Hey, welcome to a rather unique edition of Horsepower this time as we focus on an age-old question. Which is better, the supercharger or the turbocharger in terms of cost, ease of installation, and of course performance? Now, we don't plan to settle the argument, but we can show you comparable installations side by side of each, then you can make up your own mind. Both are forced induction systems. They compress the air flowing into the engine, and more air means that more fuel can be stuffed in too, so you get more combustion in each cylinder. The key difference is the power supply. In a supercharger, it's a belt that connects directly to the engine like other accessories. A turbocharger gets its power from the exhaust stream, which runs through a turbine that spins a compressor. Okay, the superchargers first on this 2009 Camaro with an L99 engine. The 6.2 liter V8 makes 426 horsepower at the flywheel with a manual trans, 400 with an automatic like this one. We're installing a Magnuson MP2300 TVS from Trick Flow Specialties. We start by removing the PCM, which will take a plane ride to Magnuson for reprogramming. Now we need to drain the coolant, but we'll save it for reuse later. Next, the engine cover comes off, along with the passenger side vent tube. Now the air inlet tube, and go ahead and get rid of it because it won't be used again. Then after a series of disconnections, including the coolant hoses, injectors, and other electrical connections, the entire OEM intake assembly comes out. Here are some important steps. Vacuum the valley cover and clean the heads with alcohol or a similar solvent to eliminate oils and residue. Finally, cover the ports with tape. Now take out the air box and filter, but go ahead and save them for later. Now we can disconnect the radiator hose, leaving the T-fitting intact and just move it to the side. Up next, disconnect the fans and pull them out. Using an impact wrench, remove the main harmonic balancer bolt. We can finish up here by installing a new harmonic balancer bolt and torquing it to specs. The heat exchanger, with two hoses connected, installs in front of the radiator. The hoses have to pass through two holes in the splash shield, then we can finish installing it back up on top. Now, time to reinstall the fans. Up on the engine, we have to remove the coil packs along with some more pieces, but they're all in the book, so you don't need me to explain them. To give us clearance for the supercharger, we have to remove the plastic wire loom covers from the coil packs themselves. With that handle, we can transfer the throttle body and map sensor to the supercharger, and I'll tell you what, we're not too far away from firing up our first ever fifth generation blown Camaro. After we bolt this fuel supply manifold to the fuel rail and install the supplied O-ring gaskets, the blower is ready to go on. Spray the head surface lightly with a little soapy water. This will allow the unit to slip into position without damaging the gasket. There we are. Next, we can reconnect the fuel injectors, remount the coils, and connect them on each side of the engine. This new fuel line attaches to the stock fuel supply barb and to the fuel manifold on the supercharger. Now cut the blue and tan wires on the mass air flow harness and attach to the intake air temp sensor located in the supercharger. Okay. After installing a new tensioner pulley comes the two-man job of routing the new belt by pushing the idler pulley inward. The air filter and air box can go back in place now. Then on the other side, it's time to install the intercooler pump to the frame rail. Next, using a bracket from the kit, we can install the reservoir onto the passenger side coil bracket. The heated water from the intercooler under the supercharger goes to the reservoir where it's pulled by the pump into the heat exchanger. Now this is where it gets the cool outside air and it's sent back to the intercooler to cool the incoming air charge. Now, Matco makes a couple of tools to make this job a lot easier. One is this hose cutter and this one. Now this guy's our personal favorite. It's a ratcheting hose clamp plier. Once you attach a clamp to it, it allows you to open it up so you can slide it around on the hose. Then once you slide it in place, you push the release lever, it tightens down on the hose, and that's it. And that's it for our plumbing. 
Now with our ECM reflashed and back from Magnuson, we can reinstall it and make connections. Next, we need to remove the positive lug nut from the fuse center and install the wire from the intercooler pump wiring harness, zip tie the harness relay to the factory harness, then connect the yellow wire from the new harness to this ING fuse to give the pump power from the ignition. Now time to connect the new air inlet tube from the air box to the throttle body. And at this point, we're ready for fluids. First, the coolant mix we remove from the car goes back in the radiator. Then we fill the intercooler reservoir with a 50-50 mix of coolant and deionized water. That's it for the supercharger installation. Now there were a lot of steps, but the kit was well put together, and that's why we didn't have any fitment issues. Now if you're the type of guy that likes to do your own work in your home garage, and you've got a little bit of mechanical common sense, you can do this job in about a day. Now there is one little problem I have. The supercharger looks awesome sitting on top of that L99, but the coil packs and the injector harness, they're pretty ugly, but there's nothing a little cosmetic surgery can't take care of. I marked and taped the factory engine cover so I could trim away the large middle section. With a few other modifications, we've got a set of custom covers that add even more eye appeal to the blown L99. After priming the fuel system with the key on engine off, this thing fired right up on the first crank. Later, we'll compare the power output to a turbocharged Challenger. Hey, welcome back. You just saw the installation of a supercharger on a late model Camaro. Well, now time for the turbo. It's going on a 2010 Challenger SRT belonging to a friend of ours you might remember, Ted Stevens of Stevens Performance. Ted Stevens is not only an avid collector, he's helped many a Chrysler car come back to life thanks to old parts that are harvested and recycled for restoration projects. In fact, we turned to Ted almost 10 years ago for help with a Cooter project for our show. The guy who stole the show, though, was Rex Howard. Now, Rex's official title is Dismantlement Technician. We found this one. <laughs> Whoops, dropped my right. Ted's new Challenger is a bit bulkier and taller than the 1970 model, but the styling lines all echo the original. For power, Ted's 70 model has the famed 446 pack, rated at 390 horsepower. His new Challenger's got the King of the Hill 6.1 liter Hemi that makes 425 horses. We're using a Hellion Power Systems kit with 58 millimeter Turbonetics turbos, but first a baseline. Push 67 is our best number. You guys happy with that? Yep. Ah. You Rex? Yeah. Man, not bad for a car with leather seats. So we got a cool car, a solid baseline, a new turbo kit, some great company. All we need is some more horsepower. The turbos that came with the Hellion kit are capable of 25 pounds of boost, but with the motor being stock, we're only going to run five of those. Now, something else that's really cool about the Hellion kit, this charge pipe that goes up to the throttle body is the only thing you're going to see in that engine compartment. Everything else goes underneath. So I think we agree, we're talking about the ultimate sleeper. We also have to unbolt the fuel rails to remove the eight stock injectors and replace them with the larger 52 pound injectors from the kit. With the alternator pulled forward for clearance, we remove this factory pipe plug above the oil pressure sending unit and replace it with this T-fitting to feed the turbos. While we're up here, we can also install this fuel pump voltage booster on the driver's side strut support cross member. Then remove the firewall grommet so we can run our wiring harness through it. The replacement plugs from the kit have a solid core that can handle a lot more heat. You ever found any snakes out there? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I laid down on one one day. Needless to say, that man didn't get his part that day. He didn't. <laughs> <laughs> now on the underside, the entire exhaust system has to go. Get on that other. First thing to go in here are two air cleaner hoses that will connect to the turbos a little later. The Ford and Chevy guys will get to see the Challenger's taillights, but of course they won't get to see how pretty these things are because they'll be hidden. 
Now, Helion shifts these turbos assembled on what they call a pod here. And as we told you earlier, each is 58 millimeters, and that's determined by the size of this inlet on the compressor. Here's something cool. The factory heat shield that insulated the catalytic converters now provides heat shielding for the turbos. And since they're so close to the headers and the exhaust supply, that'll make for fast, efficient spool up. Each turbo has to be clocked so that the oil feed is vertical. Then they can be cinched down. When that's done, we can connect the two air cleaner hoses to the turbos with clamps. Remember how earlier we installed a T-fitting to the engine? Well, it's here so we can connect the lines that'll feed the oil to the turbos. Now's a good time to mount the intercooler in front of the radiator using supplied brackets and factory bolt holes. When turbos are mounted in the engine compartment, they usually sit up pretty high and the oil used to lubricate them drains back into the oil pan. But since these turbos sit so low, they're going to need some assistance. And that's what this catch tank and this pump are used for that come in the kit. Now the turbos drain back into this catch tank and the pump pulls oil from it and pushes it back up to the valve cover where it's returned to the engine. The first thing we need to do is mount the pump. Once again, we get to use an existing bolt hole, this time on the factory K member. The tank mounts to a bracket that's attached to the turbo. Now we can run hoses to each unit. All right, Rex, we're gonna prime this thing. Go ahead and put that hose in the oil. And here we go. There you Getting go. close to the bottom. Right, that's it. That's all of it. Now that we've got the system primed, we can connect this hose to the tank along with a sensor. Then with a blow-off valve attached, this hose goes up to the throttle body. Next, we gotta pull the back seat out to access the fuel pump wiring. This is how we wire in that fuel pump booster we installed earlier. Of course, for everything to work, the onboard computer has to know what's going on. And the kit includes a programmer loaded with a Motiva performance tune. Well, guess what? That's it for the installation, which in real time takes you about 12 hours with the help of a buddy. Now, we got all the fluids back in. We've even changed the oil. And, Ted, I don't know about you, but I want to hear this turbo hemi honk a little bit. How about you? Fire it up. All right, Mike, do it. Whoa. What do you think? Sounds good. I think so, too. Welcome back to Horsepower. Well, now we have two late model muscle cars with two different power adders. Now it's dyno time. I should point out that each got a mandatory header and exhaust swap. Well, the Camaro's going first, and it belongs to another friend of ours, Andre Smith, who's offensive lineman for the Cincinnati Bengals and a lifetime Camaro fan. There's your car. Hoo hoo! Yeah. Hoo hoo! <laughs> hey, that thing's nice. You good? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> A new stock SS Camaro with automatic transmission makes about 335 at the rear wheels. We'll consider that our baseline. 427. After several runs, though, 429 is about the best we can get. Make a phone call real quick. Good, but we should make more. Hey, help me out here. Um, so while Mike troubleshoots, right, it's my job right, to keep Andre happy. Right, this is it. all the marbles. Well, it turns out we got our wires crossed with Magnuson, who sent us the street tune flash for the computer. So, Mike's using their handheld programmer to put the bad boy performance tune in it. It'll pick up a little more now. All right, reset the play clock. We're back in action. Now we're getting somewhere 441. But come on, one more run before the game clock runs out. That's it. 448 horsepower. I think we're there. 451 foot pounds of torque. Powerful Camaro. Hey, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Game over. I absolutely love it. Impressive results, but now it's the challenger's turn. Oh. Well, 466, that's uh, 101 over the baseline. Yep. A hundred horses, Rex. Yeah. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. Let's let it cool down and make another one, though. Sounds good. Four hundred eighty-four horsepower, four hundred ninety-seven foot-pounds of torque. Gentlemen, that's some horsepower and torque. I tell you. Well, I think we're there. I think we're there. That's almost. Uh, it's one hundred and twenty horsepower over stock. A slight horsepower advantage has to go with the Challenger's Hellion kit, although that kit costs several hundred bucks more than the Magnuson. 
However, in terms of ease of installation, it's a draw. Each kit had well-illustrated, easy-to-follow instructions. And except for the Camaro split them, there were no alterations involved. So I guess it's just too close to call with these two projects. Safe to say, though, both are making gobs of horsepower, now with room for making much more. Blue has always been the traditional color of shop towels, but around this place, we've gone two-tone, using these Scott shop towels and these red wipe-offs for everything from parts to hands to, well, you name it. They're convenient, absorbent, and strong. Well, here's a wipe-off we soaked in water. I'd say that's pretty strong. And they're reusable as well. Did you know a worn cracked spark plug wire could be the cause of that dreaded check engine light coming on in your car? Well, if that's the case, you need to swap these out for new ones. And while you're at it, swap the plugs out for some of these E3s with their Diamond Fire technology. Now, we've found more horsepower and reduced emissions during tests in our dyno cell. Plus, they've got a 100,000 mile warranty, so you'll probably never replace them. We all have to take the heat now and then, but it's the cold your engine's fuel system hates. That's why heat and ISO heat here are the number one products for fuel line antifreeze and water removal. Plus, they'll prevent rust and corrosion and even clean your injectors at the same time. Well, you can get all of these parts at your local parts store. If you're as serious about the looks of your street machine as you are the performance, you ought to check out this 19-piece OER cleaning system from Classic Industries. Now it's full of their secret formula products for interior, exterior, wheels and tires, and even has cleaning tools. Oh, the bucket is not only good for storage, it has a grit guard insert that filters out contaminants so your wash water stays clean and scratch free. Now sold separately, this stuff would set you back about 265 bucks, but you can get it for 200 as a system and find it on our PowerBlock TV website. When it comes to cleaning up spills in your shop, here's a way to go green and maybe do a more efficient job. It's called Nature's Broom, and the manufacturers claim it cleans up five times more effectively than those clay-based kitty litter products. Let's test it out. Okay, here's some old motor oil. According to the instructions, we pour it on the spill, work it in with a stiff bristle brush like so, and when the floor surface is dry, which is right away, we're ready to sweep up the used Nature's Broom in a dustpan and dispose of it maybe even reuse it. Okay, antifreeze is a little tougher spill, but use the same method and before you know it, it's safely discarded. This $5 bag goes a long way or you can get the big guy for 10 bucks, both at your local parts store. Well, this show's in the bag. We'll see you next time.